way you guys did that tonight? I mean, what a game. What a game. Full credit to, to Modi and his group. New Zealand was terrific this whole series, this whole season. Um, and, you know, sort of just like the Cannes series, like, we got hot and won the last few minutes of the game, and then game five, and that was the only difference. Like, um, what a game of basketball. What a series. Again, the, the crowd support. It's like, what a, what a uh, advertisement for the NBL and then basketball in Australia. It was a heck of a game. The, to your point about how we won it, this man next to me just kind of took the ball in his hands and, and dragged us over the line, made some great passes all throughout the night, was able to, to get inside their defense and, and make things happen. And yeah, it was just a, a really gutsy effort. Could you put into words how tough and stressful it is to go back to back? Yeah. Uh, tough. You know, if last year was kind of a you know, and that crescendo towards the end where our group just really more like this was a grind this whole year. Um, we started the year pretty well, and then we had a little lull towards the end and was wondering if we were ever going to find ourselves again or get it back when we needed it. And, um, and three games out of a five-game series, these guys found a way to just drag us across the line. Uh, it wasn't uh, the best series for Zay, but he... It was a heck of a game for five. Yeah, he came out tonight, it looked like the MVP. Was it anything different you noticed? Was it his mentality? Was it I think, you know, he got uh, the very first play of the series, got a cork on like the first play of the game, his blocking foul. And, you know, it, was, it hadn't been right since then, I think, is the time, you know, each day that went on, he just felt a little bit better and able to show a little bit of who he is tonight. Um, can you talk a little bit about Angus Glover and the sort of toughness that he showed, not just tonight, but over the course of the series? Yeah, I mean, it's super tough. Glove has, has been great for us all year. It's, I told him just a second ago, he's probably been the biggest victim of our, our depth this year because we've had a like-for-like -like replacement at every position. And last year, just through injuries, we had a ton of injuries last year and all sorts of things. He found his way to just like, he was going to get 20 minutes a night covering all the spots. And, um, you know, this year playing as, as DJ's backup, a, a bunch that didn't always materialize as much as it probably should have for him. He's, he's, he's earned more minutes than he's gotten this year. But... Um, <coughs> Yeah, could see this series was just maybe one where he can give us a little bit in different ways and felt a lot of trust in him going in the game, and he, he paid it back in, in, in tenfold. Derek, what did you think of Angus's toughness tonight coming on? It was like he either bruised or broke a rib and was hunched over, but still get that big three and make big plays. Uh, well, you guys only kind of like see that, the glorified stuff like that. I see it kind of like from almost August. Um, I seen what type of guy he was. Uh, he's always been a team first guy, like very, very much so team first guy. Like every day, day in, day out, whatever it is, it's more uh, service to anybody, uh, like a servant leader. And um, like Coach said, he's played well beyond, you know, the role he's supposed to play. I, I feel like obviously we both agree that he played and make big shots throughout. And every single game we played throughout down the stretch, probably the last two months. And uh, to me, it's more so like uh, I just got to find ways to keep getting him opportunities, to be honest. Uh, he, he delivered every single time, and um, I'm proud of him. Uh, just meeting him this year and then learning his story is always is always easy to root for a guy who got perseverance like that. So uh, I'm proud of him, proud for him, happy for him. Uh, him being from the actual country of Australia and winning back-to-back -back is always, you know, uh, it's tough in any sport, but uh, I'm pretty sure he takes it uh, a little more special than anybody else. Is there a point in tonight's game where you thought – that you can get to whatever spot you wanted on the floor? <laughs> uh, I try to take the humble route, but I think I'm going to be a little arrogant. I, I, I feel like I've always been one of the, you know, if not the best player. Like, I, I'm, that's just the type of confidence that I carry. Um, I don't think I need to be a little more boastful about it. I think I just kind of carry it in and, and do what the team needs. But whenever it is, you know, the moment is there, I don't have a problem putting my shoes on and, and tying them up and taking it. I don't really shy away from it at all. What, what does it mean to win grand final MVP? Um... I probably a little. I probably relish it a little more in it as the days come. Right now, I'm just more so in the high of uh, just everything I probably dealt with internally and personally. Um, but overall, just excited for everybody, like to see the smile on everybody's faces, the entire club from top to bottom, um, support staff, all the way down to guys who are almost interns. It's like it's always good to kind of celebrate with people who are in, with you in the trenches of the dog days or the the days where we got two weeks off and we just kind of you know grinded it out. Uh, so like I said before, I probably relish it a little more as I go, but right now it's just I'm, I wouldn't even say I'm on a high. I'm just more so just proud of winning the game, honestly.
Chase, remember um, about this time last year, you told us that you told Jalen Adams you were expecting to come here and be the MVP in his first year and kind of lead the guys to that championship. Did you have any words of wisdom like that for Derek, sort of in terms of expectations for this season? Uh, probably a little less. You know, Jay and I had a, a previous season together, so I think we both knew what to expect. And um, despite all the wonderful things that everybody in the G League and NBA that I talked to said about Dewald, it was, you know, we had to learn each other. We had to, to grow together and, and all those things. And um, credit to Derek, like, you know, I'm sure I frustrated him at times and vice versa, but like, gosh, he's shown his, his true colors down the stretch of the season and, and, you know, saved his best basketball for when it mattered most. And yeah, what a competitor, what a, what a player. It was give the ball to him and figure it out, Derek, down the stretch. And, you know, I think it was 18 to three down the stretch. So he did a pretty good job figuring it out. Are the Kings in the middle of an NBL dynasty? You know, I'm, we're in the middle of a back-to-back. -back. That's what I'm worried about tonight. Um, Derek, obviously, Xavier's last game for the side tonight is someone who has played at the highest level in the NBA. Um, what do you see in him that will make him a good fit over there? Uh, we had a couple of talks probably about two nights ago, probably after our last loss. Just, uh, hmm, I think Chase can kind of attest to it, man. It's just a uh, situation that fit is everything. And I think uh, the more you can adapt, the longer you can kind of survive. And uh, I think he got a lot of stuff that's all the way to the intangibles that you can't really teach. Uh, just being a guy and at, the, at that level where you can kind of guard one through four and uh, being a guy that can, you know, you can play through and can play off the ball, I think he's very, very versatile in that area. And uh, that always give you a leg up because uh, most of the times you're not coming into a situation being the best player. You know, you come into a situation where you got to figure out how to stay on the floor, how to make an impact. And uh, I think some of the stuff that he does on a nightly basis is already kind of like some things that people struggle with. And uh, for the most part, I think uh, he's a very high IQ guy. I think he'll figure it out. Um, he got the tools, the physical tools, and uh, like I said, with the wit, I think there's no reason he couldn't figure it out and, uh, and, and, and find his way. What's he been like as a teammate? Uh, competitor. I mean, shit. Uh, <laughs> that's all I can say, man. Like, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's times where he kind of, where Chase kind of got to kind of, I wouldn't say calm us down, but kind of like, you know, kind of, let the bickering go, because I'm not a guy that's going back down, and neither is he, so shit. Uh, yeah, I'm the calm voice. <laughs> <laughs> I give you credit on that one. But for the most part, man, it's just uh, one through five, I think everybody's did a good job. But of him being the guy that got probably the most experience in the league, cause alongside Bruce, he just did a good job of kind of like giving guys a heads of wolves to come. Um, Chase, obviously yourself and Matt copped a little bit from the NBL over some comments after game four. Um, is it all kind of all fair and love and war, patch it all up after the game, or part of the theatre, those sorts of comments? Yeah, I mean, Matt, credit to his group and, and what they were able to accomplish this year. Again, what a team, what a season. Uh, Modi and all their guys, they're just, what a, what a tough, tough team. Um, yeah. Chase, Derek, what, would you, oh, Chase sorry, what would you like to say to all the fans that supported you throughout the season? Yeah, thanks. I think we've we've helped shape or change the maybe the narrative of basketball fandom and whatever you want to call it in Sydney. You know, everyone likes to jump on the bandwagon and talk shit on the Kings, but set records left and right this year. Um, had more fans in the building over and over again than anybody else. Um, just a credit to them to to come out. You know, on two days' notice of a sale, and to have the, the place packed tonight and have it the atmosphere that it was, we don't win that game without the support of they, the, the fans down the stretch. And Derek, how was that playing in front of that uh, crowd? They're all for you. Um, cheered every basket, uh, every play. Even you know, when they stuffed up one, that was a, a big cheer. That must give you a lift. Uh, I try not to be as uh, as calm as possible, but like I mean, for the most part, man, I I try to stay within the moment. Uh, and runs, of course, I hear it. Of course, like I said, I thank the Sydney faithful, of course. But, uh, man, I got so much other stuff I need to do while on the court. It's so hard to focus on, you know, the crowd. So um, they always show up and show out for every single game uh, in every way, shape, or form, whether it be internet posts, uh, comments on and off. Uh, in every way, shape, or form, they've always been supportive. And uh, I don't have nothing but good things to say. And just back to Angus, um, he made a play. I think he was going for three. He's the side of the backboard. Came back into his arms and he's run up and dunked it. Um, that lifted the same. It seemed to be a bit of a turning point or get you a bit of momentum. Uh, I mean, <laughs> or just a play. I mean, I think when you've seen the game and how it was going in the first couple of minutes, I think me and Chase, of course, and anybody that's played this team multiple times now, just know when it's those type of games, like down the stretch, when they get to one, two.
possession games, every basket matters. And like I said, uh, he's been a team first guy. And uh, sometimes it's, you know, his, it's his time to take the credit. Like, you miss a shot, nobody ever hangs their head. And as you see, he missed a shot and go get miss. it. It was a tough miss. I mean, yeah. it was a double clutch. Like, <laughs> it was a brutal one. That just shows the type of guy he is. He go right back out there and go dunk it. So, I mean, it's a big momentum lift for us and, uh, and a big sigh of relief, of course, down the stretch. Does he dunk as much? Is it part of his game or is it he does a bit? Yeah, he got bounced for sure. Okay. Derek, you have a, you've had a story career across multiple countries. Mm -hmm. Where does this moment rank among all your accolades? Uh, you know what the best thing I can say about this is uh, I haven't really kind of been on a team that's – uh, that got as much camaraderie since probably around college, just based on the culture of every NBA and uh, just being in places for umpteen months. Um, I think this is one of the groups where I feel like I finally kind of got a chance to let my hair down and kind of be back at home in a college setting and just kind of be within the locker room and not really kind of have a lot of distractions. Um, but sure, I mean, I don't think you understand how hard it is to win the championship level at the professional level. So you kind of you take every single situation and, and chance you get and hone it because uh, who's to say you never get a chance again however long you play. Do you think we'll see you back here next season? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I think we all got goals and aspirations that we love to meet. Um, as great as this one was, I think um, when it's all said and done, we'll just make the, you know, the educated decision for us all individually. You've got the goggles with you at the moment. How are you playing to celebrate tonight? I mean, my girl came in town from Detroit. We've been gone. She's been gone for about a month. Uh, we probably just kind of, you know, hang with the guys for a moment. And I'm tired, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna go lay down. I'm sure he'll be up late. <laughs> I'm gonna be locked out, bro. Matty McQuaid. Yeah, thanks, Chase. Um, you know, you've had a great run in 2004. There was a game five at the Sydney Entertainment Centre, and the team was down by seven with three minutes to go, and ran off 18 straight. You guys were down by seven in the fourth quarter, ran off 14 straight. Can you just talk to that quickly about you know, there's amazing parallels between the back-to-back -back championships, but in particular that run when you absolutely need it at the most? Yeah, I, I was giving the ball to Derek, and we were basically running this play that said, Derek, go beat your man and we'll play off you, and he did it time and time again. Um, but to, they, you can't only make a run at one end. I thought our... our our stops at the other end too. I mean, I think back. I think X had a, a block to lob, and another one he might have knocked off the rim. Just you know, huge plays, huge rebounds that, that set all that up. But yeah, it was it was give the ball to Derek and get the hell out the way, and, and he made some unbelievable plays on stretch. You became the second team to go back to back twice, um, joining the Perth Wildcats. What what does that mean to you um, right now? The history of the league, I don't want to uh, belittle it at all, but I don't really care about anything other than <laughs> our group winning two and just winning tonight. That's I'm, yeah. I'm so happy for the new guys who get to experience this together and, and for the guys who have been back and been a part of both. Um, yeah, it's pretty special. But, yeah, we're just we're working on our own group and not worried about other teams or clubs. Sure. Records. What comes next for you, mate? I mean, obviously celebrating. <laughs> a lot of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> and then a baby in a few <laughs> weeks. So we'll, we'll focus yeah, on those right. those two things and yeah. alcohol and baby, and we'll work from there. All right. I'll leave you to it, mate. Congratulations. Thanks, Maddie. You good, boys. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, you got one more, Alex, or you good? Mama, I love you. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> oh, one, last, one last question. Thank you, guys. <laughs>